This is GabNet, the Great American Broadcast Network, now in its eighth year of talk like you've never heard it before. Everybody. It is the Ramble, and we're going onwards to midnight here in New York City, in the United States, and all of that stuff. Okay, hi, how are you? What's, what's new with you? Are you? Have you had a nice, did you have a nice weekend? Uh, you'll have a nice weekend another, what, two days after this, so... Yeah, we do this about three nights a week, do we? And, uh, you know, we try to do it uh, bright. So, and we bring people in and we talk to them. And uh, we have, you know, we'll talk to the rest of you later. But uh, I uh, I just uh, decided that, um, it won't, it, I don't know. Let's see here. Here, Phil Myers only got his, uh, his, uh, are you there, Phil? Yes. Oh, there he is. Oh, wait a minute. Uh, I, I clicked the wrong button. There yeah, you cr clicked the wrong button. Okay. Good for you. Yeah. Oh, wait. Uh, you know, I'm still positive. Uh, I'll get the mask on. Yeah. Uh, yeah. 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 Hey, I'm always positive. Yeah. Good. You know. I'm glad uh, you're positive. Also, uh, chug some of this. Mm -hmm. Paxlovid. You know. Yeah. Did you, you got the Paxlovid, huh? Yeah. Uh, yeah, I didn't. Uh, I didn't. Well, maybe I didn't notice the difference because uh, you got it too fast. Early, you got it mm -hmm. too fast. So what you did, you know. Well, yeah. Uh, am I supposed to suffer? Well, yeah, no. I guess. No, no, you don't <laughs> want to take any chances. Is what you don't want to do because you have to take that within five days. Yeah. Of coming down with it. So. Yeah, and I'm pretty sure that it was within five days. I had a sniffle on Tuesday. Wednesday, I was starting to uh, cough a little. Mm -hmm. uh, Thursday, I took the test, and I was positive. So, so when, did, still, when did you get the Paxlovid? Uh, I got it on Friday. You got it on Friday. Okay. What did you do, call your doctor? Uh, yeah, the, the Kaiser has an online uh, deal uh, to be able to just order it up, and then I sent Faye to go pick it up. Oh, okay, good, good. Cause she, has, she had, has she come down with it? No. Uh, she had it a oh, couple she, weeks oh, ago. She had it a couple of weeks ago. That's how you got it. I see. Uh, okay. Possibly. I either got it from uh, the gym, or I got it from Faye, or uh, there was uh, one other one other. Part. I love it. I got it from the gym. I actually supposed to there, go there to get healthy. Actually. Yeah, but I, you know, some people just don't want to uh, stop going. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, uh, I talked to my uh, trainer. And I told him I'm still positive, and he says, "Hey, you know, it's all right. We'll just go off in a corner." You should be, <laughs> actually the Paxlovid should kill that positive pretty fast. Uh, yeah, it hasn't. It I, hasn't. I spoke to the uh, advice nurse, and they said that I may be positive through through Saturday. Oh, okay. Well, yeah. But, just you know, don't the, cough the in the my night. face while we're on the show. So, yeah. The, the, <clears throat> uh, the nice thing is, is I, you know, I've had some friends that you know, call and uh, want to make sure that I'm OK. Uh, Greg, my uh, my rolfer, he's he's checked in with me every day, multiple times. Did I and, call? Did I call? Uh, huh? Did I call? No, of course I didn't. <laughs> <laughs> you know, well, does the uh, does the earth uh, circle around Alex or does Alex circle around the earth? Well, did you call me when I turned out to be positive? Probably. No, I don't think you did. Yeah, I uh, I probably did. No, you didn't. Yeah, I, I always wish you good. Uh, Why, are you carrying a grudge? <laughs> I'm, yeah, I'm nursing a grudge. Boy, are my nipples hard. Yeah. Yeah. But well, anyway. Uh, let's see what else is going on. Uh, I, uh, I've i been noticing all of this stuff uh, on on the news, CNN especially, uh, that they're coming out of the woodworks against uh, Fox. And uh, some uh, CNN said that Tucker Carlson hates Trump. I don't know. I, I'm figuring that this news that I'm getting now is just as fake as the fake news that no, I... No, that was an actual text that um, Dominion 
has made available to the public. Uh, the, mm -hmm. These were texts that went back and forth between the hosts. Yeah. And he said, I, I, you know, he doesn't like, he didn't like Trump, you know, but nevertheless, that isn't what he was like on the air. That's all, you know. Now they're just trying to prove that there was, uh, that, that what Fox did, they did for money. They didn't do it because they're yeah. out of belief or out of uh, good journalism or whatever, you know. Now, Carlson was given 40 some odd hours of, uh, of film or, or it was video. more than that. I think it was like 4,000, some amazing amount. Yeah. Really? Mm -hmm. uh, and I guess his producers poured through it and, uh, you know, they found, they found, they found some issues with it. And now they're saying that the other news services, uh, or, uh, took clips, uh, and, and try to fashion what was happening uh, in a well, uh, did you watch? Did you watch Tucker? Uh, just a little. I uh, watched the whole thing. Yeah, so give me a uh, your rundown on it. Well, what he, what what he did basically was he showed something, then he claimed it to be something, and then impressed upon his audience what they're supposedly seeing, when that isn't necessarily what they were seeing. Get what I'm saying? Yeah, you're saying he's he's done what uh, others are claiming that other networks have done uh, to, uh, against. Uh, well, I or, mean, or, in this particular case, we're just dealing with this particular case. Let's not get into the other outfits because uh, I don't think they're they they're anything they have anything to crow about. Okay. Oh. Uh, no, but but the fact was that what he was doing was he was showing something and then he would say, well, see what you see here? See, and he was impressing upon you what you were supposed to be seeing. So he, he was directing when, the conversation. When it, it could have been something else altogether, you know? Yeah. Uh, I mean, what I did is when I, if you turn off the sound, what you see is, you, it, for instance, with the, the shaman, which is the main thing he tried to show. Oh, the guy with the horns. The QAnon shaman, that the, uh, the uh, capital cops were walking him around and he makes it out, he says, and they gave him a tour. No, they weren't. I think they were just following him and making sure he didn't do anything he wasn't supposed to be doing. But mm. on the other hand, uh, they were in a, a, a bad position because their job is not to go beat up the, on the public and everything like that, you know? And so they were just being just a little bit standoffish. But he's saying, oh, no, they were leading them around. See, they enjoyed him being there. You know, there's no audio to, to, to back that right. up, you know. So, so I mean, that, so it's every, everyone's got a different interpretation as to well, what Well, I happens. mean, if you, look at it, if you look at the video, you really, uh, and then there was another point in which the, the Capitol policeman who died, mm -hmm. they pointed him out and said, oh, he was still alive by the time this video was out. Yeah, but he died afterwards. He died afterwards. I don't know if that he wasn't injured by then, and that wasn't the same cop, you know. But he's yeah. saying it is, you know. All I'm saying is, is that that, is that uh, called num misdirection. Num it, it, yeah. Oh, yeah. Sure. Uh, yeah. But, but you know, the worst thing about it is, is that if they were going to give this out, and I don't know that they should have given it out, uh, they should have given it to all the press. You know, they shouldn't have just given it to one organization. Uh, that was showing bias. Did the organization get it because they're being sued and they uh, got no, it? Uh, no, no, no. It had nothing to do with the suit. Nothing to do with the suit. If anything, he made more of a case in the suit than the last couple of days because of the way he's been acting. You know, yeah. he isn't giving up the ghost on that, uh, 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 you know, the election was fixed. Right? Yeah. And it's something he totally, in his uh, memos or his texts, it completely discredits, you know. So I mean, mm -hmm. it, it, it's it's a, you know, it's let's face it. More I mean, like cockroaches when you the know. If I were you, if you want to go to a right wing organization and watch uh, watch Newsmax, forget Fox. Fox is just trying well, to. Fox is done. Yeah, uh, yeah. you know, I, I like the Washington Times, and you can get that online. Is that still uh, owned by what's his name? The uh, I think so. Uh, the the guy that uh, the the Sun Korean, Young Moon. Sun Young Moon. Yeah, yeah. That yeah. might be. He might be dead by now. That's it's been forty years. Has it? Yeah. Yeah. Well. Yeah. But uh, oh, now uh, just to jump to a different subject, if you're ready, uh, 
What did you think of that special, the Chris Rock special, and how he uh, handled the slap and some other things that are going on? I wasn't that happy with it. Yeah. You know, I, 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 I'm, I, you know, here it is, what, it's a year later? Mm-hmm. And you're talking about how you're still bothered by it and so on. And now I'm going to talk about it on my special on Netflix, which I want to get ratings for. So I will get another special from Netflix for even bigger money. Yeah. Uh, and um, uh, I just, you know, I just felt it was he didn't have to do it. He just could have done his special. He's a very funny guy. Do your funny material and get the hell out of Dodge. But no, he had to, in the last uh, eight minutes of that special, go after yeah. Chris, uh, go after, uh, uh, what's his name? Uh, Steve, uh, uh, Smith, Will Smith. Will Smith and, and Jada Pinkett Smith. He went up more after Jada than he did after uh, Will. Yeah. yeah. But Actually, I mean, I thought, it, I thought it was, can I say a cheap shot? Yeah, he could have taken the high road, but he's a comedian. No, 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 no. He 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 could have taken the high road, and he not, he, he didn't take the low road because he was a comedian. <laughs> you know, because there was nothing basically in what he was saying that was funny. People were just laughing because it was outrageous. That's all. They weren't laughing people, because it was funny material. Do you think people wanted to know, uh, you know, what his thoughts were on it, and he and he delivered it in his comedical way? No, he. But it wasn't funny. Well, uh, that that's you know that's your interpretation. No, of I it. didn't think it was funny, and I, in fact, quite frankly, I've never found Chris Rock particularly funny. Yeah, I found him mostly. I find him a fraud uh, because he, you know, he he plays the he plays the black ghetto card when in fact he was brought up in a in a very upscale neighborhood and a very wealthy family. Okay. Yeah, I I, you know. I watched uh, I watched one of his movies on Netflix uh, yesterday or the day before. Uh, you know, having COVID, I'm home. <laughs> I'm not going anywhere. Uh, this one was uh, he was uh, trying to learn to be a super uh, superhero. Mm -hmm. uh, did you see that one? What? No, I don't know. I don't um, know. Uh, it was like uh, Kid Rock or, or something uh, to that. Uh, I forgot the the name of the movie already. Uh, here I'm bringing it up, but. Yeah. Uh, he he goes to a school and um, uh, uh, Vinnie Barbarino is running the school. What's that guy's name? Uh, John Travolta. Uh, John Travolta. So he, he's running a school for God, after all these years. He's still Vinnie Barbarino, right? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> well, you can tell I was in a cocoon for thirty years, and yeah. then all of a sudden I woke up. Yeah. Yeah. But. Uh, yeah, it, it, was, it was a cute movie. What the premise of it was is that uh, this guy wanted to film a movie that was totally natural. So they were filming the whole time as they're beating the guy up and they're doing all sorts of stuff. And, mm -hmm. uh, and he, um, uh, you know, he gets through and they say, OK, we got a movie. And of course, the producers say, I love it. You know, <laughs> yeah, I vaguely remember something like that. But yeah. So, uh, what's your week been like? I understand. Uh, you, I, do you want to do a Shecky report, or uh, you're not ready I'm, for that? I'm, I'm, I'm less ready today than I would have been yesterday. Okay. Uh huh. Right. But not as ready as you're going to be tomorrow. It's it's not a pleasant situation. No. No. Uh, is it um, okay? Uh, well, I'll try. You know, it I mean, no, I mean, it's, it's just uh, uh, you know, I, I went over there today, and it's it's not good. Uh, was he uh, awake? No, no. Uh, is this an induced coma? Maybe? No, no. They took him off the sedation. Oh, good. And and the uh, intubator? No, he's still being intubated. Hmm. And um, yeah, and he. Um, uh, you know, but he's been taken off sedation, but he's not waking up. So, uh, is uh, is it possibly a kidney thing? I don't know what it is. I'm not a doctor. I have yeah. no idea what it is. They, look, how can I know if they don't? Yeah. Well, we can ask Alan. No. Yeah. Right. <laughs> yeah. But uh, no, I'm I'm very sorry that you're going through this. Well, you know, I I, I could talk about it but it, it, it's not going to do any good and I don't you know there are a lot of people who are rooting for him and I don't want to put them in a bad state of mind right now 
because yeah. of my observations and my discussions with the doctors and so on. But yeah. I, I'm, I'm, it, it bothers me because this is a man who has been my friend for the last 45 years, you know? And we've done a lot of things together, you know? I keep remembering them over and over again. Our trip yeah. across the United States, uh, uh, the fact that, uh, you know, uh, you know, we went to the comedy competition together, all just these little things that are what make up a larger picture of our lives. And we, we really have been good friends for 45 yeah. years. And that's, the, that's the, the really hard part about it. And, well, and I talk to him at least once a week, and we talk about movies and so on and so forth. And, you know, now I'm in his hospital room. I can't even talk to him about those things, you yeah. know? Does he, does he know you're there, you no. know, if you touch no. his hand? Or? No, no, no. Oh, amazing. Yeah. I mean, uh, I'm, I, mean you know, I, it, I went, I went uh, when was it, Saturday, we, I went down there. And mm -hmm. he was just, he just wouldn't wake up. And yeah. The nurse tried to wake him up, but he wouldn't wake up. And I just wanted him to wake up so I could say, Shecky, I'm here, hi. You know, you said and, that uh, that uh, there was a visitor, the gal Rudy or something, that was in there before you went in, and he was awake at that time. There was somebody else who went there before I did who said he was somewhat aware of Wait. stuff. Mm -hmm. Yeah, but when I got there, he wasn't. I see. And today um, he was intubated, and they were pumping all kinds of things in him, and you know, it it, uh, it, it just it's you know it's hard for me to. Hard for me to see, but I, you know, on the other hand, I just, I don't want to give my impression of it mm -hmm. because I don't want people who, and there are a lot of people that really care about this guy, you know, yeah. they, and they're, they, they, uh, they've been constantly asking questions and so on and so forth. Uh, we have a, a text loop going on a text, um, board as it were where mm -hmm. we're supplying information to each other. And there's so many people that just love him and care about him and are, you know, feel like I do, you know. And yeah, I nice don't, I, and, and I, yes, I have my impressions of what I walked away with today, but I don't want to say it, you know. Yeah. But, well, you know. Be positive and have, you know, positive thoughts. Well, and, that's all I can say is for everybody to have a positive thought. Um, you know, there's part of me, you know, there's part of me that is uh, is very sad and has been very depressed most of this evening. Yeah. And um, there's part of me that goes, you fucking son of a bitch, why didn't you take better care of yourself? You know? Do you think it was uh, a, a re an issue related to his, uh, his health, uh, you know? That it wasn't just well, a one-off. Obviously, thing. if he's in the in the hospital, uh, well, fighting yeah, for I mean, his life, it was caused well, by something no, medical. Yeah, but uh, caused by his um, his lifestyle. Yes. Yes. Yeah. Okay. Yes. You know, I won't talk about that. I won't go there. But mm -hmm. yes, but I mean, I just keep, you know, uh, it, it, I keep wanting to say, hey, you know, you should have gone to a better doctor. You should have seen better doctors. I mean, he's been going to doctors for a couple of months now because he had this problem where he just uh, passes out, you know, and, and they all say, oh, it's this and it's that and it's you're not getting enough iron and it's, uh, it's uh, uh, anemia. You know. yeah, yeah, that's what I thought. I thought it was anemia, or at least that's what was talked about a while ago, yeah, maybe yeah. A, a month or two it, ago. It was something far more serious, and the doctors that he was going to didn't didn't see it. You know, mm -hmm. well now they can see it. You know, but uh, but they can't see it either. I mean, the doctors at the hospital are where they, where he is. He's at Bellevue, which is I don't know. I'm not that hot about that hospital, but. They're, they seem to be very good, and they're really caring for him. And uh, they're, they're decent, you know, they're, they have a decent uh, uh, desire to, to solve this problem. But the fact is that, you know, they don't even know what's really wrong. Yeah. Uh, you know, uh, and... Well, and you, all you can do is, is hang in there, uh, g uh, give them hope, uh, even if it's well, just I can't your, do your anything. Team. I can't do anything else. You know, I mean, I went down there today, and, of course, he was out, 
he was uh, he wasn't awake. Uh, he had all these things pumping into him, and mm -hmm. there's nothing I can do. You know, yeah. I, you know, I, I I would feel guilty if I wasn't there, but I didn't feel any better by being there because I can't do anything. This is my friend. I would love to be able to. You know, what do you need? You need my blood. You need my kidney. What do you need? You know, I'll give yeah. it to you. Are we even allowed to give blood since we were radi irradiated? I, I think we are. Yeah, I don't think yeah. there's a problem there. I mean, as long as they test the blood and it's good, you know. But I mean, yeah. I would do anything. I'd give them a kidney of mine. Hell, what age yeah. am I? How old am I? How many more years have I got? Take my kidney, please. You know, <laughs> uh, you know I mean, uh, and it's not that it's his kidneys. Uh, yeah. But I'm saying that's an example, you know. Yeah. No, I understand. Well, uh, you know, I am sorry if I brought up uh, uh, something that, you know, brought you some ba uh, uncomfortable feelings. Well, I would love to be more um, informative about this, but unfortunately, I just don't feel that it's right for me to, yeah. to do it, you know. All I can say is that he's not in a good way, you Yeah. Know? And well, I, I I didn't know one way or another because I'm not in that email string, and uh, uh, you know I was just hoping that it was a more positive uh, positive day. I I was thinking a couple of days ago that it was going to be positive, but you yeah. know it doesn't seem to have gotten. You know he's a little bit better today, but you mm -hmm. know he was a little bit better a couple of days ago and then worse yesterday. You know so yeah. it, it's it. It, How's it, his T cells and his white blood count? I don't know. I'm not his doctor. I don't look oh. at his blood work. Well, when they turn their oh, back. Oh, gee, I'll ask the doctor the chart. what his blood count is and what his T cells are like. You well, know. yeah, that's uh, that would give an, uh, you know some help to understand whether or not uh, you know he's going hey, to hey, get stronger. Hey, hey, you're not a doctor and neither am I. Yeah, but I you know. play one on TV. Yeah, I know. <laughs> that's right. But I mean, so, you know, I mean, it, it's, it's, it just sucks. It just sucks, yeah. and um, you know, I, uh, I mean, I was talking. He was on uh, our Monday show just a week ago. Yeah, you know, talked to him after that, after the show. Next thing I know, he's in the hospital. He was supposed to go on vacation. You know, he's mm -hmm. going on a cruise, and yeah. I called him on Wednesday, and I assumed that he was, uh, uh, he was already on a, on the way down to. Florida because we're going to stay yeah. with a friend down there before getting on the boat and uh, I figured maybe he left because I wanted to just wish him bon voyage so he didn't answer me back he didn't answer the phone so uh, I then sent him a text wishing him bon voyage the next morning and I didn't mm -hmm. hear anything back and the next thing I know is on Saturday his friend Randy was the assistant director over at the Letterman show and it's been a really good friend to him. I mean, just she's terrific. Yeah. She's the best. But anyway, she uh, she got a hold of me on on Saturday, which was a couple of days later. But I I don't fault her for that because she was probably spending a couple of days trying to deal with the situation. But she said she didn't hear from him Wednesday, and on f Saturday, since she has the key to the house, she figured she'd go over there and see if everything was okay. And there he was, passed out on the floor. Oh, that's got to be a very scary yeah, thing. Yeah, so she then took him to the hospital. They looked at him, and they immediately got an ambulance and sent him over to, uh, uh, where do you call it? Uh, Bellevue? You, you, you think Bellevue, Bellevue, but he was alert at that point, you know. Yeah. Yeah. So, uh, you know, uh, and there he has been ever since. I went over Saturday. That was the first day I got to go over there. Mm -hmm. And uh, then I went again today with my friend uh, uh, Steve Weiner, didn't go yesterday because uh, his brother, uh, uh, Rick's brother, uh, was coming in from, I think it's Colorado where he lives, Steamboat Springs. Yeah, that's and, Colorado. And uh, he came in and he, we gave him, see it's weird because this kind of situation we've got is that only two people can be on the floor at a time, on, uh, in his room. In the room? Time. Yeah. 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 But if if you've got two people up there, they don't send up another person. Okay, you can't like wait in the hallway or something. So really? so we've had a sign up sheet and mm -hmm. we signed him up for every hour yesterday that he was going to be here so that yeah. he could, you know, deal with the situation. 
so I didn't get to see him yesterday. But I was signed up for today, and I went over around 2 o'clock. And my friend Steve went over with me, yeah. um, Steve Weiner, who was the guy who introduced me to Shecky 45 years ago. And, uh, you know, it's just... Uh, it's just, it's very um, yeah. well. You, you were know. you were talking about the experiences that you've had uh, going across country and mm -hmm. uh, do, doing the comedy competition. Uh, you know, as as life goes on, those are the things that are important in life. The things that you, the experiences that you have. It doesn't matter how much money. Uh, it doesn't matter uh, how much of fame. It's the experiences that you have. For instance, uh, my daughter got married. Mm -hmm. And uh, she's going to Monte Carlo for her honeymoon to Monaco. And when she was uh, a child, maybe eight, nine years old, I took her and her sister and her mom to, to Monte Carlo. Uh, we ate at a restaurant, uh, the Alan du Cassis restaurant, Louis XV, which, which is in the Hotel du Paris. It's a very famous three-star Michelin restaurant. Mm -hmm. So she likes fancy restaurants. And so I sent her a menu and a check and told her, have, have dinner uh, at, this, at this restaurant because it's those experiences that you'll remember. Mm -hmm. And here she went there as a little girl, and now she's going as, as a woman uh, uh, married on her honeymoon. And so I think it's a really uh, neat thing. I, I hope she has a good experience. Well, I hope it, the food hasn't turned bad. <laughs> well, I think they've changed it since 2002. Have, have you checked to see if it still has the Michelin stars? Yeah, yeah, yeah. It has three Michelin stars. Okay, that's pretty good. That's yeah. pretty good. You know. And uh, I remember when uh, when we ate there, it was with another couple, uh, Susan, myself, and my two kids. And yeah. the bill came, and it was 1,000 euros. And I looked at it, and I said, geez, I really hope that the tip's included. <laughs> <laughs> uh, oh yeah yeah oh yeah yeah they probably have a picture of me on the wall <laughs> how much so, was it total uh in 2002 it was a thousand euros so what's that about thirteen hundred dollars about thirteen hundred dollars yeah yeah wow yeah. that's uh it's a nice piece of change yeah in 2002 and yeah, but that was uh, for how many of you uh four adults yeah. and two children okay that's that's not bad no, and but not everybody had a cocktail. Not every uh, we didn't have a bottle of wine. Not everybody had a uh, an appetizer, mm -hmm. and the kids ate barely barely a thing. Mm -hmm. And uh, yeah, it was it was not cheap. Did, but, and did uh, you go with it, your wife at that time? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. No, I went with my girlfriend. <laughs> I left her in the hotel room. <laughs> yeah. Right. I bet, I bet you did too. Uh, <laughs> Yeah, you know. but uh, no, this, this is a nice experience. I mean, that whole trip was was really cool. Uh, but um, you know, I'm I'm looking forward to her having a good experience. But I wonder. I said, you know, everybody smokes in France, even in the restaurants. I don't so think anymore. Prepared. I think that's kind of stopped. I think that's really? stopped. Yeah, I think I think pretty much smoking has become de classe in just every every country of the world. You know, wow. well, I think they stopped smoking in uh, in in France the day they stopped liking Jerry Lewis. So, <laughs> I I yeah. thought they still liked Jerry Lewis. Yeah, you know, hey, it's Pax Lovid. Pax Lovid. <laughs> no, I'm, I'm, I'm I had just had double vision. Yeah. Wow. Uh, yeah. Well, it could be uh, the events of the day plus uh, you know. Well, you know, I've just been very tired time. the last couple of days. I don't know why. I don't know yeah. why. You know. Well, I'm I'm starting to get some energy back. The uh, the COVID uh, it's just zapped my energy. Uh, it, it wasn't it wasn't that bad. I, I had a, a little bit of a cough. Matter of fact, I had a cough a couple weeks ago when I was talking to you on the air. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Or, or actually, it was uh, you know during the show. You know, well, there are a lot of people rooting for you out there yeah. uh, who listen to this show, but they're not rooting for you to get better. No, they're no, rooting for you to get worse. So yeah, well, hey, they get what they get. But I'm not, you know. I, <laughs> I was just going to say, you know, Shecky's my best friend, but without him, I guess you're going to have to be. So, <laughs> and that's a scary thought. <laughs> yeah, you know, I mean, that's that's uh, you know, I understand. You know, uh, I don't want to take the torch, 
but uh, I, I'm, I'm wishing only the best for, for Rick Sheckman and that he recover quickly and that you keep your best friend. Well, I want him back, you know? Yeah. I mean, I, you know, it's kind of one of those things like a parent, you know, you always expect to die before your children, right? So yeah. sometimes when a parent loses their child, it's so tragic. Well, I feel somewhat the same way, you know. I mean, I expected that Shecky would be here long after I'm gone. Yeah, you know? well, he's he's younger than me. He's sixty-seven, I think. Yeah, I'm sixty-eight. Yeah, well, yeah. So, you you like all your friends, young, huh? <laughs> yeah, I like all my friends young. <laughs> Let's bring some people in here, okay? All right. And none of them seem to have fake names, so you know we're well, fine. Yeah. Here's how many? How many Jeff Steins are coming in tonight? Uh, just the one, I believe. Yeah. You know, if I, if it isn't him, I'll have to get rid of him really fast. And yeah. uh, no, oh, there he the, is. It's the real Jeff Stein. It's the real Jeff Stein. Uh, and uh, hello, the hello. He's getting some color. He's in Florida. He's oh in, yeah, yeah, yeah. You out in the sun, Jeff? Correct. Yeah. Uh, uh, Charlie Wallace. Hello, Charlie. Hello, Alan. Hello. Hello, Jeff. Jeff, we heard you okay. Hi, how are you? Yeah. So you got some sun on your this face. This is the, the real one. <laughs> yeah. You, you got some sun on your face. Yeah. I've been on the ocean. Oh, really? Oh, you been in a boat? No, not in a boat, but, well, yes, in a little boat. Oh, I thought you meant, when you said in the ocean, yeah. usually you mean on a boat, you're, unless you're drowning. You know? Yeah, no. Isn't uh, Jeff uh, uh, ha has a boat up north and, is, and sails? Well, my wife has uh, a boat with another partner, uh -huh. a friend of hers, and so they share the boat, and it's a sailboat. Yeah, that's a smart thing to do. Uh, yeah. You never use it that much, you know, at least no, with these people. Yeah, that's nice. Like Phil's been yeah. wrong on everything tonight. You never use oh, it. Oh, we've been in uh, Florida. Uh, what do you mean he's been wrong on everything tonight? Alan. So the one, the first thing I want to say is I'm sorry to hear about Rick Sheckman. Yeah, me too. Um, I, I've lost friends that I've known for 45 years. Now he's not dead yet, but I mean, that's because they don't like you. <laughs> he's not dead. So, um, yeah, it's it's it, and you know you probably have a lot of anxiety right now, Alex, including telling Phil you didn't want to talk about it, and he spent 10 minutes talking about it. Well, I, did, I, I still haven't talked much about it. You know, I mean, I haven't told you so my, he, my impressions. He, what? Yeah, he, if he's intubated, he is sedated. No, you're wrong. Uh, boy, that would be really uncomfortable if you woke up with this tube down. His well, throat. he obviously isn't awake, but he hasn't been, he's, he, they took him off sedation. Okay. Yeah. So you, you're, well, they normally sedate people when they yeah. Yeah. Alan, did you check his chart? No, but you were asking all kinds of stupid questions. Well, that's okay. Within five, his kidneys? With, within two and minutes of being on here, up. Alan's giving medical advice. <laughs> yeah. That yeah. would really in trouble. <laughs> yeah. 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 Well, also, uh, 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 Tony's a good friend of Sheldon's. Yeah, I'm, I'm upset, yeah. yeah. Tony's been trying to pump me all day. No, I mean, I was just worried. That's <laughs> I, told him I don't know anything. Well, to show you how much uh, Tony cares, uh, he, he, uh, he, while my show was on, you know, the, uh, the pop-up show, he kept, yeah. he kept putting all kinds of stuff up about this and that. And I know yeah, Pebble, I Pebbles listening. and Bam Bam, I don't know. You know <laughs> yeah, Pops is a lucky charm. And, and, so and if you'd listened for one minute, the whole show was about Shecky. You know what it was? I was cooking and then my phone, and then I, when I finally tuned in, I didn't hear what you said until... The very end, and then somebody posts up. I was like, "What's going on?" I was like, "Holy shit!" Yeah, I was like, "I was totally floored." Well, I announced it to the group on Monday because I was in shock. You no, know, because now. they are, they're kind of video friends with him because he was on every Monday. Yeah. Uh, as a matter of fact, the thing uh, Randy told me was when he was taking her, when she was taking him to hospital in the ambulance. He was lying there going, I got to get better by Monday because I have to do Alex's show. Oh, my God. I heard That's how that. much he liked doing that show on Mondays, you know. And and uh, so all the people there, you know, were, were intimately, uh, as Charlie is, because he calls that show. 
Um, you know, your shows are addictive. You know that. Hmm? Yeah, I see. You, you I get the you get people calling yeah, up. Only to like people who are forward. on them, however. Yeah, <laughs> unfortunately. Well, eventually you get more on. You know. Yeah, Phil, I thought you told me that you went to an event and later on found out that a lot of people got COVID. Oh, yeah. I knew that it was a third possibility. Thanks for reminding me about I'm that. Sorry. You know, I, I have COVID brain, and, uh, you, you know, you forget some stuff. Let's Sunday I went to a, a, a photography event, uh, an awards luncheon, and five people got COVID. And there was only maybe 50, 55 people at the whole event. Uh, and, and, of course, they weren't wearing a mask, were they? Including no, them. they were not. Let's see, here comes Kevin. I think it's, it, it, it looks like Dr. we're Rinaldi. getting the actual people who say they are what they are. Yeah, there's Kevin. Hi, Kevin. Hey. Hey. Well, so, the, the the Zoom bombers are saying you're not fair to them and giving them, uh, you know, enough time on the air, you know. And yeah. So they're going to call another show that's nicer to them. Yeah, good. <laughs> Let's not encourage them, okay? Yeah, porn coming on the thing, man. Huh? <laughs> Yeah, he's gonna encourage these crazy people to call Alex. Yeah, yeah, I didn't. Yeah, to get back what you're saying, I wasn't listening. I felt so bad when I found out. Me, I was neither. in shock. I, I didn't even know what to do. I was like, what? Yeah. I don't know. Yeah. I was like, oh. Not even. Yeah. So, Did not, something yeah. more happen with Shucky? No, n not particularly. He's just not oh. any better. Let me put oh, it that okay. way. Okay. Yeah. Uh, Sorry. And, and, and what'd you call on Monday? Yeah. yeah, he came in late, yeah. late in the show. Yeah, yeah. late. Yeah. yeah. He, he, today he was a little, a lot, uh, quite a bit worse than he was when I saw him on Saturday. Okay, okay. Saturday he wasn't intubated, uh, and uh, they had him on Benadryl, I think. For some strange reason, they were giving Benadryl with transfusions, and I don't know what the reason is, but I'm, yeah. I'm not going to ask. You know. Yeah. Uh, Alan, will tell us. and it, it, yeah, of course, Alan, Mister. I won't tell you, but I have a feeling I know why. But I'll just leave it. But anyway, out. so he was really out. He, I couldn't wake him up. You know, but that was the worst of it. Today, you know, it wasn't it wasn't pleasant. So you know, I'm just hoping. You know, that, yeah, that, I'm saying the friend, so I mean. You know the doctors are wrong, and well, the doctors aren't right because they don't know what it's all about. They don't know what's causing the problem. You think in this day and age of modern medicine that they'd be able to tell with some tests? You would figure that, yeah, yeah. Um, but uh, you know, I, I, I just uh, uh, he has a friend uh, uh, who was his was his GP for the longest time, and his name is Lou Aroni. Now, if the name sounds familiar to you, it might be because he's the guy who was Letterman's GP, who immediately sent him to a heart doctor, and within hours. Dave was having his heart operation, and he saved Dave's life. And mm -hmm. I said, that's a pretty good doctor to have, Shecky, you know. Well, over the years, now that they're no longer on the air over there, he doesn't go to Lou. And I, I suggested to him weeks ago that he call Lou and say, listen, here's what's happening to me. Who can I go see? You know, and I said, he'll take your calls because he likes you, you know. You were, you were a, a patient of his, and, uh, you know, uh, and and but he didn't, you know. And I wish he had, because right now he could be getting world class care instead of. I mean, he's getting. He has very good doctors. They're very attentive and they're very caring. But, you know, that doesn't mean that yeah. they're good enough to solve this problem. Uh, and uh, it, it's just you know, it's the luck of the draw. You know, it's whatever hospital they decide to send you to. Like when Randy was in the in the yeah. um, uh, what do you call it in the ambulance when they were taking him over to to um, uh, Bellevue, which the only person I ever knew who was in Bellevue before was a girlfriend who went crazy, uh, mm -hmm. but uh, and the joke was always crazy Bellevue, right? Yeah, he was crazy. Uh, but by the way, oldest hospital in New York City. Is it Bellevue? Uh, yeah, and really? I think in the United States it was the first. General Hospital in the United States. A sanitarium? Well, they were. They have a nut house there. Yeah, yeah, yeah they do actually. Yeah, it, yeah. it was always a joke in old movies and TV shows. We're going to send you to Bellevue. We're going to send you to Bellevue. Yeah, yeah. yeah. 
That's Isn't the, that you know, where you were born, Phil? In the Sing Sing. I, I was born in the maternity the was was up the river. In the maternity <laughs> section of Bellevue's mental ward. Yeah. Yeah. Phil okay, has a Jewish room. hospital. He was they the baby holding the rug swatches. <laughs> no, but, no, but, no. They, the, the, the doctor came out and said, we did everything we could, but he still pulled through. But they said to, yeah. they said to him, uh, <laughs> she yeah. said to the guys taking her over in the ambulance, can we take him to, to Mount Sinai or somewhere else? And they said, that's, no, yeah, that's no, we, you. no, we've been told to take him to, you know. Oh, Mount Sinai is good. My mother's doctor was there. Rube, Stephen Mount Rube. Sinai has a better reputation, don't yeah. they? Yeah, yeah. Uh, you know, it, it's uh, it, it's a shit show. Okay, demonetize me. Okay, it's a <laughs> shit show. I don't want to get all upset. It's a shite show. Shit Hopefully, show. they will find out what's wrong with him and treat him, and he will get better, Alex. Yeah, that's all you can pray for. It's a it's a it's a messed up feeling when you get there to visit somebody. It, it's a powerless feeling when you see. Yeah, absolutely. No, but we talked. We talked. Like, where's the positivity in this conversation? We talked to the doctors too. We're not allowing you to talk. I get mad when they talk to these doctors. We talked to the doctors too. So. Are you talking? Okay. In fact, there were five of them there, and one of them actually came over to to Rick and I and said, uh, "You know, here's the deal. Here's here's what's happening." You know, and it's it's just you know it, it, nothing. It's not right, you know. It's not right. But with one thing, we we you know we know when we were born. We just don't know when we're gonna die. Mm. Bless you, Larry Bubbles Brown. He has the uh, he has the answer to that. Yeah, he has a thing you can go online to, and it'll tell you what day you're gonna die. Of the yeah. death the death website. Well, what what did, what was his line? He said, "Wouldn't the day, be, but not the year." Wouldn't it be great? <laughs> no, no, no. Uh, yeah, wouldn't it be good if you knew when you were going to die, but it was only the day, not the year. <laughs> yeah. number. So. I remember when I was in high school. This uh, this palm reader woman in the back of a bus read my palm, and she told me I was going to die of a heart attack when I was forty five. She was said that? It was 48. And, and so a lot, every, I think about that often as I was approaching 45. <laughs> we have hardly anybody listening to this tonight. I guess it's depressing, right, folks? You know what I have to say to that? 33. <laughs> yeah, I don't know it's sucks, life. Dude. I'll get on. Yeah, but it sucks, though, really. Yeah. It does suck. Well, I mean, I'm doing a show tonight. I didn't even feel like doing that, you know. I'm, and I, I, I messaged you a few times, so I apologize, Alex. I don't want to be too, too many messages. At least then, I didn't so. get any of them. You know why? Thank God. Blocked. 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 Okay. All right. I didn't apologize. <laughs> That's oh, a smart wow. move. <laughs> That's a smart move. That is a smart yeah. move. Yeah. Tony, you can message me. You don't message me anymore. You can message well, me. I tried to back off a little bit, so I don't bother That's you right. too much. Yeah, right. now, he's, now he's attacking me. Oh, okay. Yeah. Yeah. I, I was calling to see how you were feeling, though, Phil, too. Come on, and Faye. Yeah. Uh, he, he wanted to know if I was intubated. No. <laughs> he sent <laughs> Faye out to get food. <laughs> He's like, come, let us stay in, Phil. What, do you, what do you guys <laughs> think about what we were talking about earlier? Oh, God, this thing just flashed. Every now and then it flashes on me. Hmm. Oh, well. You're, oh, you're stressed out. No, the screen itself just went, Oh, sorry. It did a couple of days ago. And I had to do it once before, and then I just unhooked the monitors and hooked them back in, and it stopped. But anyway, where was I? Um, uh, what did we think about what we were talking about? It was probably one of the other topics. With, no, with uh, the, with Chris the, with, Rock, or no, no, with the. Uh, huh? Did anybody see the Chris Rock thing? Not yet. Oh, I did. Just a I piece. I my sister's. I saw it. Yeah. What, what I kind of wish he really didn't say anything at the end. I mean, a lot of people like, feeling are feeling that way. They yeah, feel I mean, that it, it was, was like you're right. Alex. There was really no place for it. Just do your show. I mean, we all know what happened, you know. Yeah, just make people laugh. That's your best yeah, way I mean, of getting even. I feel like I'm a part of a few of them. Like, like nobody cares really. What do you mean when he said something at the end? What did he? What? He did about an eight-minute piece about being slapped. Oh right. Now right. I yeah, got I, news, I got news for you. That was a year ago. Yeah. I okay. Mean, Get on with it. You know, he almost took I'm away from Is your whole career now in, in later years going to be based upon you got slapped? You know? Yeah, yeah that's what they're saying. Much, 
Did he have much of a career? I don't know. He wasn't that yeah. good. Oh, yeah. He had a, oh, he's a rush. He had, he had a better career than I think he deserved. Yeah. You know, I don't think he was that good a comic. Uh, you know, at least you're, wasn't you're welcome to disagree with me, folks, by the way. I disagree with you. Okay. No. I think he's pretty damn Well, funny. then get the fuck out of here. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, go back <laughs> to Mondays. <laughs> come back, Brian. Come back. Come back. We love you. Okay. He twisted my arm. I'm back. Yeah. Okay. Stay on that Monday show. <laughs> well, actually, I haven't been on for a little bit on Monday because uh, I've been driving so much to Lodi, and I like listening to it on the way on the way to work. It sucks up a, a good hour, so yeah, yeah. But we miss you. Yeah, I was just busy. When I can, I can. When can't I can, you, I can. can't you put the car on cruise control and get on the show? <laughs> no, because uh, I've been I've been like that hour now. Usually, I'm working, and running all around. So if I'm driving home, then. Are you taking the self-driving one so you can, uh, you know, do other stuff while it's uh, taking you there? Not yet. Are you driving the Tesla, the McLaren? No, no, no. I got, no, I got my. Yeah, self-driving McLaren. You know. <laughs> I can't believe you have a McLaren. I want a McLaren. I live right next to that place. Yeah. Yeah, we just did a thing over there. I forgot to let you know. We did a, I, on uh, on uh, April fifteenth. They're going to do a uh, cars and coffee there. Hey, do you know if it's easy to get uh, the opportunity to test drive one there? Yeah, just I've seen the suits you wear on your your uh, plays. Just wear one of those fancy. Okay, things. I'll just wear one of those and walk. Yeah, in. wear one of those. <laughs> okay, okay. <laughs> hey, maybe, maybe you'll let them drive yours. Although those suits no. are usually not mine; they're the ones they give me. <laughs> you know, I hey, wouldn't. Hey. To be honest with you, I wouldn't know a McLaren if I saw one. Yeah, yeah. It kind of looks like a Ferrari, kind of. It's a, it's an Irish car. Uh -huh. I'll, let you, I'll let you know. I, I think it's April fifteenth. If you go there April fifteenth and uh, oh, the, okay. the coffee gonna... thing, then then I'll take you for a ride after. Okay, if, I'm going. You, and yeah, if I'm you gonna buy put a car, my car rate, you really buy a car on that day, they'll give you fifty dollars off. Just, I, cool. I, I, I accept cash only though for for the drive, but we'll hey, talk about that later. A check. <laughs> if I bought a McLaren, my wife would kill me. Yeah, well, that's that's why no. you're not married. Good, good thinking. Now, is your Tesla that's self why I'm sleeping on the floor? Is your is your <laughs> is your Tesla self driving? No, 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 no. It's got cruise control, which I was really surprised. It's like, yeah, I go 100 miles an hour cruise control. <laughs> well, you you got the what? You got the cheapest Tesla, right? The yeah, cheapest. No. Uh, so, so the middle it, one. it's the it's. Since it's the first year of them going to high production, it's the most, it's the least expensive, mm -hmm. but it has more horsepower than the next years that they started after that. So, so my my years is high horsepower, 616 horsepower. Then the next ones had 570, and then they started going up. So even though my car is one of the first ones and it's inexpensive, uh, it's faster and better than some of the. What is inexpensive? Like forty thousand. No, they yeah, were well, like 60, about new. 60, somewhere around 60. What do you have, Brian? Which one? It's a 12C Spider, so it's convertible. No, oh, no, the no, McLaren. I'm talking about oh, okay. the Tesla. What? The, McLaren, the, the McLaren's an MP4 12C, and okay. that's the, uh, yeah, and that, that's a convertible. What year? It's a 13, 2013. Oh, okay. Yeah. No, it's a 1913, actually. <laughs> that's why it's so cheap. Did you get a good deal on it? Ray right? stopping already. Get off that website, man. Your wife walks in, you're in big trouble. <laughs> no, no, I'm looking at Oh, that's a beautiful car. Wow. You yeah. lucky son of a that is so beautiful. Brian's gonna have his thirty something Cadillac out pretty soon, I heard, I saw. Yeah, my thirty four Cadillac's getting finished, so is yours red? Is your McLaren red? No, it's like a sapphire black, so it looks black, oh, but oh, I see it. it's like a purple blue. Yeah. Oh, I see it. That's wow. Beautiful. Oh, that is cool. Damn. Wow. Yeah. I haven't owned a car since... Hector was a pup. No, I haven't owned a car. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know why that's funny, but it is. Why is that funny? I don't, I, I, I don't, I don't know. I haven't owned a car since, <laughs> 19, 19, <laughs> uh, since 2013. Yeah. Wait a minute. Excuse me. 2003. No, wait, where, 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 yeah, 2003. Wait a minute. Hold on a second. 
20 years? Wow. No, no. When did you move to New York? About 15 years. When I moved to New York this time in 2003. Yeah. So that's when I sold my cars out in California. So I haven't owned a car in 20 years. Wow. You know, but there's no reason to have one here in New York. Right. You know, maybe while we're we're uh, where uh, Tony lives, yeah. You, you know, know, over here, Alex, it, me and my brother went to put flowers down for my mom for her birthday. It, for my house, to the cemetery is like a 15 minute ride. It took us like almost 35 minutes because there's so much traffic here now. We can't even drive around here. Well, that's why Shecky stopped there. driving. He stopped driving. Yeah, it's, it's his friend, brother, his friend Randy, <laughs> drove him around when he had to go somewhere because he didn't want to drive his car on the streets of New York any longer. He said, well, it's, I, it's I know insane why he stopped out driving. There. It's insane. I know why. There. Why? It, you, you broke his door handle. I broke his door handle. <laughs> right. He, he told me, that. I'll never forget that. Alex broke that. He used to go to the. <laughs> said, he did break it. Yeah. That's probably in his will to but, give you the door handle. Yeah, but I'll tell you what I did. I, I yeah. came up with the solution for it. Roll he, down the window. Roll down the window. Yeah, he told me that. That's a, yeah, and he then told pull me that. on the handle to open the door. <laughs> and to close it, you don't have to do anything. It's it's fine on the outside, you know. Yeah. But that's the way. You know, this is the first time in my life I haven't had a car payment, and and it feels so good. You know, there. It, 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 why you just paid off a car? <laughs> well, I I paid it off five six years ago. Oh, good, good, and. Oh. And, you know, I love this car. It's a Toyota. And there's nothing like this car. It's such a comfortable, I, I really... Well, it's a kind of a weird life. addiction we have to, once you get rid of a car, you immediately buy a new one, you know? Yeah. And then or you, you pay that one payment. off, and then you buy a new one, you know? And, um, uh, you know, I, I, I always used to do that. When, my, when one car was paid off, I immediately buy a new one, have more payments. Right. That's my problem too. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah. I and, always buy one every three years because of the Now, on the other problem. hand, Shaggy had a car that's I think twenty-seven years old. Yeah, it, it, uh, that's we still have my dad's car. It's like a yeah, a yeah. and and it, it you know occasionally he said it. it only had sixty thousand miles on it. Are you ready for that? Wow, you know, <laughs> wow. I think he told me Randy was telling him, "You got to buy a car. You got to buy a car." Hey, not Randy. Then, somebody else was giving him a bad yeah, time. Says, like what am I going? He said, "I'm only going five minutes." He goes, "He says I'll buy a new car when this one completely doesn't work anymore." That's where my brother says, "It's going. Hey. We have to go. We can't even drive in Queens." He goes, yeah. "You can't really." Yeah, I I'm, I remember my father when he would buy a brand new car. He'd bring it home the first. You know what the first thing he'd do with the car? Throw he, pennies in? No, he'd go get any ashtrays. No, he'd go get a hammer. <laughs> and put a dent in the car. Yeah. What? And the reason was, he says, now I don't have to worry about the first dent. <laughs> Obviously, he didn't have a McLaren. Yeah. No. <laughs> uh, those are carbon fiber. They don't dent. <laughs> I think of where I put the dent. Yeah, that's the harder one. <laughs> no, but that's what he would do. He said, then I don't have to worry about the first dent. Because you're always worried about the first dent, you know? Right. Yeah. And you first got the first dent. dent, and no matter how small that dent was, that's all you saw on the car. Yeah, right? yeah I used to, I used to clean when I record car shows and stuff. I'd detail out my my gold Cadillac, mm -hmm. and my ex would come in the the garage while I'm in there, and then she would just start looking, and she start saying, "Do you do you know there's a chip right here?" And I'd say, "Please get it back in the house." <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and then of course I she knew, went over there. Yeah. You know, every single scratch, every single chip on your car, when, especially those cars. Right, oh. Kevin? Yep. There's yeah. your McLaren, Brian, behind me. Well, I, yeah. let, me, let, me get, let me get a cheap thrill from you people. <laughs> what kind of car do you run, drive, uh, uh, Phil? Kevin? Phil? Uh, oh, Phil? It's a Toyota FJ Cruiser. Mm. It's pretty uh, cool. Okay. Yeah. It's, uh, it's a, it. it was a concept car. Uh, originally, and uh, so they and Toyota built it, mm -hmm. and I, I just I just love that car. It's a cool car, I have to say. We yeah. did a copy run in it. Yeah, yeah. Here comes he's Wayne. Got it, he's got it blinged out too. He's got Recaro seats and yeah. the high end Alpine stereo that won't connect to his iPhone. Yeah, uh, yeah. There's some sort of glitch right now. It kind of looks like a Hummer. Yeah, 
a little bit. Yeah, yeah. a little bit. But uh, yeah, very so retro bad. looking. Yeah. Now yeah. behind me is uh, Brian's uh, show car uh, that uh, that I took a picture of uh, when we were having coffee. Did you win any contests with that picture? No, not with this one. I never submitted it, but uh, well, you I, should. It, yeah, it's, but uh, I, I like it uh, because in the reflection, it ref, uh, I'll tell you what I'll do. A I'll, I'll do what car. I'll do. Don't bring up his 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 uh, competition for <laughs> <laughs> you know because uh, what I and uh, <laughs> yeah, I got first place. Uh, you know what I'm going to do? I'm going <laughs> to I'm going to take it. and I'm going to send you a dick pic. And then you you give you put that up as yours for the next. Uh, It'll probably win. Yeah. Who's Dick? <laughs> mine, of course. Well, I'll claim it. Got to hand out magnifying yeah. glasses. Might, like might get him scared. <laughs> <laughs> you know. No, I get a you get it. They'll start throwing stuff at you. <laughs> Charlie. No, no, no. You you put it in the show and you just hand out magnifying glasses. Let's see. Uh, for you, uh, it's tweezers. Okay, let's look at uh, let's look at Charlie's T-shirt. I don't trip. Oh. What? I do. I, I do random. random gravity checks. I don't. Wait a minute. I like when you fall on the floor. Oh, I. Well, yeah, but I don't. I can't see that one word before random. It says and I, I do. do. Uh, I do I random, do random gravity, gravity checks. <laughs> That's a good one. Is that a new shirt? Yeah. Newer. Yeah. Because you've never worn the same shirt twice, have you, on this show? Or maybe you have. Oh, yeah. Yes. But after three or four months, you don't remember it. Yeah. After three or four minutes, I don't remember it. <laughs> remember. I'm 20, I'm 83 now. You know. Do you remember that? What? Is the, Shep the older than you or younger, Alex? Huh? Shecky, is he older or younger than you? Younger. He's younger. 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 He's younger. Much younger. He's oh. like 80. What is, what is he, uh, Tony? 67. He's 67. a year younger than me. Wow. Yeah. yeah, we went through this already. Yeah. So, yeah. yeah I think but Alan wasn't before. listening, just like Tony. <clears throat> oh, there's Jeff. Look at Jeff's shirt. Look at this. Oh, Nash Healy. Nash Very cool. Oh, oh. Is that the one you stole? <laughs> you know what? Are you, are you not allowed to talk about that still? <gasps> May I the tell front you? end of my car, Alex, looks just like the Nash Healy. Really? I oh, own, very close. Yeah. I own what was the car? Uh, I'm trying to. Th I wasn't an Austin Healy because an Austin Healy is a pretty good little sports car, right? Yeah. What was a, a what was the one that Austin made? That Austin would, Jensen? No, it was uh, a really cheap one. Oh, a Morris Minor? No, uh, no, 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 no. That wasn't even that wasn't even an Austin. Austin oh. Powers? <laughs> yeah, baby. I remember you had a square back Volkswagen. I know that. Oh, yeah. really? Yeah. Oh, when was that? Oh, God. Maybe 40 years ago. Well, that was in California? In California or New York? New York. In New York, but he brought it out here. Oh, really? No, I didn't. Yeah, no. it was... No, it, was, it had been broken into so many times and set on fire and everything else <laughs> that by the time I left New York, I just left it on the street somewhere. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> I, <can't take> it. <laughs> no, I always thought that one was yours. It was a blue one parked in, uh, over at... But what the, this one was, well, this yeah. was an Austin that yeah. looked like a, a, a frog on a lily pad. Look like a frog, not like a Citroen uh, du no, Chevu. No, come on, that's oh. a French car, not a British know, but, car. Uh, it looks like a frog. Austin Healy. No, no it was an bug eyed Austin. Sprite. Well, it was made Austin by... Healy bug eyed Sprite. Uh, Austin Healy there Sprite, I think Austin. it was. Bit bug eyed Sprite. No, it wasn't yeah. called a bug eyed had Sprite. Had Fifty eight to sixty two, I think. Yeah, yeah. It was the worst yeah. car I ever owned. I think that's it. I've seen those. About a 900 cc it, it, engine. One day it was raining really heavy in Marin, and mm -hmm. I went through a couple of puddles, and all the water came in through the floorboard into the car. <laughs> they had wooden floorboards, and, and they and would, a, they a would rot of, out. A couple of days of this, and I went back to the dealer, and we said, we want our money back. And they gave it to us. Mm -hmm. Oh, Did you yeah. buy that as a kid? Yeah, I was young. I was like... 1920 something like that yeah wow. maybe yeah i had a fiat 850 spider oh. which was similar piece of shit oh sorry <laughs> shite 
<laughs> I had to push start the thing. Well, better than saying what kind of car do you own now, what was the worst car you ever owned? The Fiat A50 Spider. Okay. How about you, uh, Phil? Uh, I had a 62 uh, Mercury Comet. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. <laughs> How about how about you, um, Alan? I had a Chevrolet Malibu when I was in high school, and it was terrible. Constantly, oh, constantly. <laughs> being Fuck you, Alan. That's why I drive a Ford. Yeah. How about you? How about you, um, uh, Charlie? Uh, worst car ever that you were drove. Car I ever own. drove was a uh, Plymouth Voyager minivan. <laughs> oh my broke god! Broke down all the time. All the time. How about you, Jeff? Worst car you've MGB. ever owned. Huh? MGB. MGB. Yeah, they were kind of. My know. mom had a yellow one. Yellow MGB. Weren't they highly overrated? Or were they I'm suitably? Huh? Yeah. I had an MGA when I was in high school. Mm, yeah. Oh, okay. the, the door used to open when you went around corners. <laughs> oh, God. How about you, Tony? Worst car you ever owned. My Apollo 5 speed. I never owned a car. I only had bikes. <laughs> oh, I never owned a car. Did it have a banana seat? Yeah, they they <laughs> I used to go to Brooklyn with someone. It popped off. I lost like a thing. I had to redo it. Wait a minute. You don't own a car right now? Well, actually, technically, I could say I own part of my well, What do you mean car. technically? You either own a car or you don't own a car. There's no technically. No, I don't because my brother pays the insurance on that car, too. So I don't own anything, no. He has. Same it. as it is. I can use it if I want, though. You know, you have a driving I, take, I take my driving refreshing, which I wanted to do. How about you, uh, you Ray? Worst car you ever owned? Fiat 850 Spider. Yeah. Fix it again, Tony. Right. Total piece of shit. Yep, yep, yep. Uh, how about you, Brian? I had a 1972 yellow uh, Ford pickup truck. Because I thought it would be cool to have a truck so I could move my parts around when I was building one of my cars. And that thing wouldn't start. And the, uh, it was terrible. And my friends call me Fred Sanford all the time. <laughs> <laughs> how about you, Kevin? Uh, you know, I haven't had too many cars. I've always, I still got the one I have from high school still. Oh, really? What's that? Well, that's my 53 Dodge pickup that I'm building now. Oh, wow. That's cool. And uh, I guess the one that was worst was a, uh, I don't re even remember what year it was, was a Dodge Dakota that I bought mm. probably around 2000, 2002, something like that. And it turned out to be a lemon. And I ended up taking it back and getting all my money back plus all i don't know 15 1600 bucks because of the inconvenience and everything else because mm -hmm. it kept going through rotors and stuff but it was just a bad it was just a bad build by you know dodge okay. but otherwise yeah. i haven't had too many cars i uh ford falcon that i got from mm -hmm. my dad off of one of his customers an old lady that was a really nice ford falcon and uh, I haven't had bad luck with cars really at all. Wayne, the worst car you ever owned? Well, of the ones I've had, there uh, I can't say there's anything, no one that's uh, worst. I've had two or three of them that uh, spent a lot of money keeping them running, but I drove a lot too. So uh, I'm not going to name any particular names, but I've been pretty much satisfied with whatever I've had. Really. Really? Yeah. Do you notice that with the exception of Ray, who won't name this, uh, you know, um, uh, Fiat, Spider, everyone named an American car? <laughs> That's all of our own. I, I had one other car that I realized now was worse. I had a one-year-old Yugo, and mm. I paid $1,500 for it. Brand new, a year before, they were six grand, And uh, I drove it... Uh, for a few months and then I sold it. Uh, but that was actually the worst car ever. I, I told the story before, but my best friend growing up, his his parents had like three or four Yugos because they had a cleaning service. And the earthquake, <laughs> when the when the earthquake, you know, the big earthquake happened, mm -hmm. uh, 
I worked at Redder City. He lived in Redder City. I checked our building. There were some cracks, so they were closing us down for the day. So I went down the streets to my friend's house. We hopped in the Yugo and took off up to the city, which I know Alex probably wasn't happy about. But we drove up to the city, and on the in front of me, the passenger side, up on the dashboard, he had like four or five handles. So whenever he'd take a corner, all these handles would <laughs> turn to the side. So if you had to get out, you had to grab a handle to get out or roll down the window. Yeah, that car was terrible. Oh yeah, the, the worst. Yeah. Now, now when I look at that that Fiat right there, that's we, exactly I, how my car looked. My, oh, really? ex, my ex-wife, when we were in high school, we had a Fiat 850 coupe. Oh yeah, oh. The, the coupes, the same car uh, basically. And it caught on fire like four <laughs> times. We just kept rebuilding it. I think yeah, okay. the Yugo was was based on a Fiat, like uh, something like that, or a 128 or something. In, in that. Was that that color, Ray? Exactly. Oh, oh my God. God. Yeah, and so no, I, I have to tell you, so I was driving down El Camino once in Sunday. Is that even then, is that even green? I think that's a color that doesn't exist in nature. I don't nature. know what you call it, Chartreuse. but that is that's Not exactly green. how it looked. Exactly. Oh, and the God. engine's in the back, and and the front is the trunk. And oh, if really? it rained, it would hydroplane because it was no weight. So I had to yeah. put a spoiler on the front to keep the wheels down. Yeah, it wouldn't that go often, fast enough for the spoiler to work either. Up. No. Well, if it was windy, it would. And so one time I was driving to El Camino, there was an identical one in front of me, and his fi- his engine caught on fire right in front of me as I was driving behind him in that one. Yeah. And uh, he had to pull over and, like, was going They were crazy. great for catching on fire. I mean, ours caught on fire, like, two or three times, and we just rebuild the wires and put it back together. I remember taking it up to a Grateful Dead concert up at Winterland one year. And we pulled right up to the front of the the right up to the front of Winterland. There was a parking spot about this big, yeah, yeah. and we just pulled it up, grabbed the fender wells, and dragged it in. Oh yeah, I used to pull it, push it around. It was so light. Yeah. It, but and it would overheat all the time. All the time, yeah. Oh my God. Yep. You, you remember <laughs> those uh, Fiat eight fifties or the Subaru six hundred? It was so light. When I first moved to San Francisco, I was living in Pacific Heights, and I had an Oldsmobile, and you couldn't park. You needed a big enough spot. So if I saw one of those uh, Fiat 650s, I could lift them, lift it up and turn it sideways in the parking space and then have enough room to park. Uh, and I, well, Those I, were almost couple... undrivable, those 650s. <laughs> they get blown around they, in the wind all the time. Yeah, yeah. You know, if my father were still alive... <laughs> Well, he'd be about 120 years old. But if my father was still alive, he would tell you the worst car he ever owned. And he, I remember him taking it back and getting his money back. Was a Corvair. Oh yeah, the washing machine. Yeah, the the newer ones, like '65, those were beautiful, and they were I, they were nice a, looking cars. Yeah, and they were based on a Corvette frame. They they were excellent. The cars. Corvair? You mean the 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 one with the engine in the Corvair, back? Corvair uh, uh, Monza is it? No no, it? no 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 no. You you don't know the car I'm Chevy talking Monza. about. Hmm? That's Chevy Monza. Yeah Monza. Yeah, that, uh, in in '62 when uh, what's his name uh, wrote that book about it? It's unsafe uh, at any Nader. speed. Ralph Nader. Yeah, Ralph Nader. Uh, th- those had some uh, problems with their I think independent rear suspension. But uh, no, it had like, trouble with the rear end, uh, the rear engine. Well, they were known to catch on fire too. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The, the later ones were uh, not only good looking. No, they, they didn't make later ones. They got rid of the Corvair as soon as the, the bad news was out on the Corvair. They dropped the line. No, they they were making them in like, sixty. Just like the Pintos. <laughs> yeah, well, they, what, they what, the Pinto. what 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 don't don't you expect a car to blow up in the back in the rear? When it's named Maybe after it, at, when it's named back, back my car into you if you don't when, when it's <laughs> when it's named <laughs> right <laughs> when it's named after a bean, you yeah, know I mean uh, it's bound to explode in the back. I know uh, a guy that had a Vega that had almost two hundred fifty thousand miles on it and it never broke down. I couldn't believe it. He must my have Pinto must never broke down in the end. Hundred fifty thousand miles. Yeah, some of them some of them made made good miles got good miles out of them. Yeah. Uh, yes, uh, yes, uh, Alan. So the most expensive car I've ever had was while I was a cop, I went to an auto auction with a friend of mine mm-hmm. to buy a sports car. There weren't any. The only thing that was there was a Ferrari 308 GTS or something like that. Mm-hmm. It was it's like the car that they use in Magna PI. And I yeah. got it for like $10,000. Wow. 
boy, that was just the start of the cost. Every yeah. 2,000 miles, you had to have it tuned up and adjusted. And Clutch. Clutch is not go meant like to be five, driven. Every 5,000 miles, it's a 308 GTB. Yeah, they go through clutches. Yeah, that's why I didn't get a Ferrari. The I newer ones I, are okay, I but... I, I don't think I got it 5,000 miles before I took it to the dealership and out by where Ray lives, the Ferrari dealership. And the guy bought it from from me for like twenty five thousand. It's a good riddance. Okay, Thank here you. here's another topic. Uh, uh, the most unusual car you've ever seen. I know what you're gonna say. <laughs> what? I know. I know you're what mine. Say Darren. <laughs> the Kaiser Darren. Yeah, I know you're gonna say that. the one with the lips on the front. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. It was a weird best. looking car, man. Yeah. I don't know what possessed them on that. You know, when I was growing up, the most anticipated new car, you know, every year they used to have a, the car season, and it usually came in about September, and all the dealerships would have their, uh, first Ford would do it, and then uh, General Motors would do it, and then Chrysler would do it, and then, uh, you know, uh, who was it, American Motors would do it, and they would all put out their cars over a period of a month and roll them out. And you would go down to the dealerships at night and go see the new cars. That was the big thing to do. I don't know if any of you remember that, but yeah. certainly when I was yeah, a yeah, kid, yeah. that was a big deal. And uh, uh, the one that was the most anticipated, I remember, was the Edsel. <laughs> Uh, and when it came out, you know, and they would always uh, like have a uh, the car in a in the in the showroom before opening night, and it would be covered, right, with a tarp, so you could, so you couldn't see what it looked like. And the day they took the tarp off, everybody went, "What the fuck is that?" <laughs> Somebody at there was a guy by the name of S. I. Hayakawa who wrote a. A treatise was, called uh, the. It was the state senator. Yeah, but he also wrote a. He was far more famous for having written a treatise, early on as a, uh, uh, a, professor, a professor, I think, at San Francisco, uh, at State, San Francisco State. He wrote a a treatise on the sexual symbolism of the American automobile, and Ford read this and said that's not a bad idea, and so they built this car that had a vagina. That's basically what it was, right? Bill was the number one buyer. And by the way, this, I was told this by, was my car in high school. Oh, how does a car you, have you, a wait? But can I finish what I'm saying before yeah. you suddenly, yeah. you know, drag okay. us into the uh, into the uh, into the mire, uh, the mire? Oh wow, fucking uh, mire. Uh, yeah. <laughs> anyway, um, I, I, uh, um, I just uh, you know, uh, it was a it was a strange looking automobile. But I was told the Edsel wasn't a bad car. Mm, no, and they, in the in the custom world, they've made a comeback because because of how unusual it was. It's like, you know, they they like that. So when they modified it and cleaned it up, like shaved a lot of the ugly part of it up and lowered it and stuff like that, uh, they look pretty good. They did try to do a comeback by doing away with the vagina front, you know, the horse collar. I'd like to call it. Yeah. You yeah. Know? And uh, also, they had uh, they ha you could change you know gears by pushing a button on the hub on the uh, hub yeah on the, on the steering yeah. wheel steering yeah, wheel hub steering wheel. Wow. yeah they had a uh, some the Chrysler's st had it on the some yeah, Chrysler 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 Vega had, had, had a push button uh, transmission yeah but but this on the on the Edsel was right on where you'd have the horn on the uh, mm -hmm. yeah. on the on the I steering think if you, wheel if you drove if you drove different cars and you go to hit the horn, <laughs> yeah, you go into third gear or whatever. I don't. Know. Okay. Yeah, the, the McLaren drives one way, shifts and, and all that stuff one way. The Tesla does another way where every all the shifts are up here and you start it up. It's just mm -hmm. a park. You push the button at the end, and then my daily driver is a different way. The shifts are on the floor, more traditional. So sometimes do I gotta you, sit do you, there. Do you you don't have the Tesla with the odd steering wheel, do you? No, 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 no. That's the plaid. That's the yeah. Because it it has a an airplane yoke, really. Yeah, yeah. That's, that's which very they cool. say is not a bad idea. Yeah, makes yeah, more my... sense. Yeah, because yeah, you can see all the dash. Everything's really clear. There's nothing obstructing your way. Yeah, yeah. So you know, yeah, yeah. And you can see all the all the panels and so on and so forth. Yeah. But, you know, do you have that big like iPad in the middle of the car? 
The Tesla, yeah. Yeah, yeah. That I always they thought all, was kind of cool. I think they all too. have that, don't they? Yeah, yeah. yeah. What's can the I most? Ke- what? Can I ask Kevin something? Sure. Oh, sorry. Sure. Go ahead. Kevin, I I had I used to have maybe you know this, but it, because it was off in a police car, I had a Chevy a '79 Chevy Caprice with mm-hmm. a 400 inline engine. That thing was fast as hell. Yep. Inline, Unbelievable. Inline and the suspensions on those things. One of my old engineers bought one of those off of the like you guys seen the auction. Yeah. And yeah, it was one of those Capri something somethings. And yeah, the the suspension and the speed of that thing was really fast. That Literally. thing was amazing. Yeah. Like, right oh, the yeah. tracks. <laughs> that was an amazing car. I love that car. <laughs> that, that yeah, had a Ford then. version. It too. only got like twelve miles a gallon though. Crown Vicks did that too, I think. Yeah. yeah. Back then, gas was nineteen cents a gallon. Yeah. Yep. yeah. Well, I remember a price war, mm-hmm. and I remember it going down to eight cents a gallon. Wow. Oh yeah. Yeah, yeah. They would get into a price war, the gas stations, and then this guy would lower his, and the other one would lower his. I mean, they were all being supported by the gas company, you yeah. know. And and eventually, you just sit there and you watch this. They they are there all day long. They're getting up there, changing the numbers. You know. Yeah, it pissed me off. I had to change the numbers a lot. Oh really? Yeah. How many times? Oh, yeah. you, uh, that was when they were having a price war, right? Yep. How how many times in a day do you remember having changed the uh, price? Uh, it wasn't necessarily per day, but it was daily sometimes. Yeah. 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 And then you'd have to go out and reset the mach- the 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 pumps. Oh yeah, yeah. yeah reset oh, the pumps oh, and then yeah. change the damn things and on the signs and the signs always had to be accurate because if they weren't you get busted I the lowest know. i remember is 17 I, I when i was a kid i remember seeing uh gas for 17 cents a gallon that's the lowest I yeah because we used to do our we'd walk the the lawnmower up the street or the mini bikes or whatever well let me give you a little history they uh, for uh, what was it uh, um standard yeah. oil uh used to do My a thing where, where they would this, let's say mom and pop had a really popular gas station on this corner. Yeah, I know. So in order to get that corner, what Standard Oil would do is open up another gas station on the other corner, all right, under the name Yellow Dog Gas. Really? Yeah. Wow. You probably heard the term Yellow Dog to describe yeah, a certain I... kind of behavior. Yeah, and what yeah. they would do is they would just knock the price down. So mom and pop had to knock theirs down, otherwise nobody was gonna buy gas from them. And then they'd lower it more. And of course, Standard Oil, because they had all the oil they needed, uh, they could pretty well take you down to the bottom. And so these people would then suddenly have to close their gas station and sell to Standard Oil, who would then buy the gas station and close down the Yellow Dog. Yeah. And they did yeah. that for a long time. That's yeah. how they my dad out now, of business. The, the guy who started Standard Oil, I think, was John D. Rockefeller, and and wasn't he a man of the people? He used to give kid. He used to give away dimes. Yeah. Was Standard Oil Rockefeller. I don't uh, remember. It, it, now, who who was Standard Oil? Was it was it? I don't Oil? remember. I think it was. Yeah. Yeah. You might be right. Yeah. He lived up man in Hillsboro for a while. Yeah. yeah. But that's that's where that's how they used to how they used to screw people and how they got prices down sometimes. But they what did that ha- for a long time. I mean, they ran hit me, ran my dad out by you know basically doing the same kind of thing and then uh, boosting up the rent, of course, because he ended up on, on his own little island in between a bunch of stations. Uh, he was in San Mateo, hmm. but he was by himself. But the closest station was down up by Burlingame Avenue and the other one was down by San Mateo and he was kind of alone, but they forced him out by um, wanting to put a uh, a car wash in there. Mm -hmm. And he didn't want the car wash and the neighbors didn't want the car wash either for all the noise. And so they said, well, we're going to boost up your rent from, I don't know, it was was something like, you know, the rent was 800 bucks and they wanted to boost it up to 3,500 a month, something like that. Yeah. And that's how they basically ran them out. Well, you know, I mean, I remember when I was a kid, you would pull in, my father would pull into a gas station, and five guys would come out, you know. Yeah, uh, that was and, us. You yeah. know, 
and uh, uh, they were wearing uniforms, literally, bow ties. with bow ties that were like made out of like plastic or something. I don't know. They shine. They were shiny bow, bow ties. They gave you steak knives. Yeah. Oh yeah. Blue, that, they stamps, were... blue chip stamps, all that stuff on the. Oh, yeah. You yeah. know, last year when we were driving through Italy, they still have that. The, the guys come out, they pump your gas, they yeah. clean your windows. Do you know that New Jersey, They, I think, I don't know if it's still true. Anybody here from New Jersey? No, nobody's here. In Oregon. Oregon. Oregon, they still pump your gas in Oregon. Yeah. yeah. Maybe, it was, yeah. maybe it was Oregon, not New Jersey. But New, Oregon. New Jersey, they pump your gas. They do. They still pump your gas. That's all they do. Yeah. That's all they do. Yeah, but, but, I mean, they used to come out and do everything. Wash One guy would wash your windows, another guy would pump the gas, another guy yeah. would check the oil. Yep, yep. And always another, check the oil. Yeah. I used and to another tires. guy would fill After the school. tires. Yep. After school, I'd hang out with a friend who worked at a gas station on the Taconic Parkway. Mm -hmm. and, uh, and and we would, uh, you know, in the, in the winter, you'd have to clean the windshield, and, and they'd be iced over and, and, and stuff like that. And I helped them out, you know. It was, uh, yeah. And the worst thing was the little old lady that would go, you missed the spot. <laughs> <laughs> what about this? The bug is still there. Yeah, yeah. But always did it. What happened? What happened to bugs? Do bugs still? I don't know. Uh, bugs still hit windshields. Oh, oh, yeah. oh yeah. Oh yeah. In Texas. Yeah. Oh, in Texas. Yeah, I remember that. Yeah. Yeah, there's a lot of bugs. Florida. They got those love bugs. They not only hit the windshield, but they get through your air conditioning and up into the car after you've uh, masticated. And they make love to you. Yeah, really. No, they hit them. I think there's two bugs together. And that's why that's they call why them they love, call bug. love bug. Yeah. Because they smash together? Yeah. No, because they're actually mating when they do that. Wow. They're mating then while they they're the while, while they're splatting while they're on flying, your windshield? Yeah. yeah. They're flying yeah, they're through there mating, and then they, of course, hit your windshield. Wow. Do you have those in Texas, Charlie? Yeah. yeah. But anyway, so we, we had that with cars where, you know, where they, these guys would just come out, and they literally attack your car, you know? And uh, and and you, you knew everything was right, you know. Oh, you're down a quart low. Okay, well, put a quart of oil in there. Yep. All right, that'll yep. be twenty five cents. Yeah, it was, yeah. It was nothing. There was a gas station in New York where you could dial the octane that you wanted, and yep. and you could dial it up to like one oh six. You know, what's that airplane fuel? Uh, <laughs> was it Esso or uh, I don't remember which yeah, one. Where you could dial it was Sunoco. Sunoco? Yeah, Sunoco. You're right, Wayne. Uh, so you could dial the octane you wanted. Do you think that they changed the octane when you changed the dial, or they just changed the price? Nah. <laughs> I think they changed the, the price. Blend. Um, really? Hey, look, kitty. Mmm, cat soup. Hey, hey Phil, <laughs> have you been to Ruth's Chris lately? Oh, yeah, uh, yeah. <laughs> yeah, we found out about that. They, uh, they, they, they... Brian sent me, and so did Alex. I, uh, I blasted everybody. I thought that was the funniest thing. Yeah, what happened? R Ruth, Ruth, Ruth's Chris, the one he goes to, has been closed down by the sanitary oh. people or the health oh. department. Yeah, I think they said the water temperature wasn't to where they're supposed to be when they're cooking stuff or something stupid like that. Yeah. They come out and they say the steak's 500 degrees. How can it, you know? <laughs> Which Ruth's Chris? Don't touch was the plate. It? It's 500 degrees. I would imagine if you go down there now, it's a reopened. Uh, I would imagine, you know, but we thought that was hilarious because the way you go, oh, I just went to Ruth's Chris. Yeah, I yeah, like Ruth's Chris. Right. Right. You got a food at McDonald's, it's right. clean. McDonald's just don't good. drink the water. Just remember, <laughs> Tomain is spelled with a P. Anyway, <laughs> <laughs> that's it. That's it for tonight. Oh, boy. You gonna go back there, Phil? I imagine you will, right? Yeah, yeah. yeah. Two blocks yeah. away from this house. But, but don't order the tea, it's cold. Okay. <laughs> really. Uh, thank you, Phil. I appreciate your participation tonight. Well, thank you for uh, having me. As I do uh, uh, admire and appreciate uh, Alan's, uh, you know, the participation. Prowess. Yeah, him telling me, yeah, yeah, he's better than the doctors are. Uh, and then he's also, cheaper. Yeah, also, thank you, Charlie. I appreciate it. Uh, Jeff, thank you. Thank you, Tony. I appreciate it. Uh, 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 hey, Ray. Hey, 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 thanks. Uh, and uh, uh, Kevin, always a pleasure. And of course, Brian, yeah, yeah. You got us talking about cars tonight, didn't you? 
That's good. But we'll I have to change the subject. Something different for a change. And thanks to Wayne as well for being here. Everybody, give a big wave goodbye, and I'll give a big wave goodbye at you, okay? There they go. That's our citizen panel, folks. They're going away, and they'll be back again tomorrow night. And uh, stay tuned for Jack Bishop. He's next right here on GabNet with The Intersection. He'll be taking your calls at on Skype at GabNet Live. Okay, GabNet Live. I'll see you again. Uh, let's see here. When will I be here again? Oh, tomorrow night, same time. Same station in life. And in the meantime, as always, if you see her, yeah, please sure to do one thing. It's very important. Tell her I love her. Okay, bye, everybody. See you later. Bye.